Hey, I'm Sean, and I'm an indie iOS developer who works on an app called Sofa, which helps you to be more intentional with your downtime. Now, I just launched Sofa for Vision Pro and the Mac, and in this video, I just wanted to talk about some of the challenges and just kind of my general experience uh, doing all of that. Now, I had originally planned to have Sofa ready for when the Vision Pro came out in February, but I was deep in the middle of uh, Sofa 4.0 during that time. So I didn't I didn't really have the bandwidth to do it. And Sofa 4.0 launched in, uh, in at the end of April. And then during May, I was mostly focused on uh, bug fixes for that launch. And then I was I went to WWDC in early June and I was kind of prepping for that too. So I really didn't have time to focus on the Vision Pro and to get things ready for it. But after WWDC, I had this kind of two to three week window where I had time to, to kind of push in to see how far I could get with a Vision Pro app and with a Mac app before I started to dive into all the new stuff uh, for like iOS 18 and, and iPad OS 18 and stuff. So I started to just kind of dive in and to see, you know, how much work would this be? I really didn't know because, uh, and at, I, up until this point, I hadn't even used a Vision Pro. So I just wanted to kind of test the waters to see, you know, how far I could get in, in a few weeks. Now, up until this point on the Vision Pro and the Mac, you have been able to use Sofa, but it's been the the iPad version of the app. And, you know, uh, you know it's fine. It's good enough. But uh, for each platform, I, I would love to have, you know, kind of like a fully native uh, solution, not just one that's that's you know, relying on the iPad, uh, it's kind of like a simulation in a way, right? It, or, or an emulator or something like that. Like it is, it's running the iPad version. So it doesn't feel quite right within those environments. Before I get into the specifics around the Vision Pro and the Mac, I thought it would be helpful to share why I'm even doing this, right? Why invest the time and the resources to bring Sofa to Vision Pro and the Mac? Because, you know, Overall, the Vision Pro is not a big platform by any stretch at this point. It's very new. And I think Apple quoted at WWDC that there was 2,000 apps for Vision Pro, um, not counting the, the kind of iPad versions of those apps. And then for the Mac, if you compare it to something like iOS or iPadOS, it's going to be a much smaller platform, much fewer customers or potential customers. So. You know, you can you can very easily look at this and say that it's not worth it from a time perspective, from a business perspective, all that kind of stuff. And every person or business will make those decisions for themselves. But for me, there's kind of two main reasons why I felt like it was worth putting the time in. So the first reason is kind of like the nerdy, more touchy feely side of it, which is I I just love all these platforms and, and, you know, the vision pro is a new platform or vision OS, but I just want Sofa to be on those platforms, right? That it's pretty simple. I want Sofa to be on the vision pro. I want it to be on the Mac and iPad and iOS. And I don't, I don't want people to feel like, uh, it'd be great if I had it on these things and it, it would make things so much better. And for myself too, cause like I use the app all the time. So I want, I want the experience to be nice on those platforms and it's fun, right? It's fun to build and design for platforms that I'm not used to building and designing for. So those challenges of, of bringing Sofa to Vision OS or the Mac, that's fun and it's nice to do. The second reason is more around, uh, it's kind of like a business reason, more around like kind of marketing and growth. And I think you'll see a lot of, companies who say, well, the vision, vision pro isn't worth it right now. Right. And you really need to look at the size of those companies, right? If they are very large companies, then yeah, it may not be worth it for them to pull engineers and designers into this other project for a while. But for myself, I just, you know, it's just me doing sofa and it's a small business. And from my perspective, any opportunity that I have, to get Sofa in front of new people is a good thing and something that I will do. And devoting a few weeks of time and effort 
to bring Sofa to Vision OS and the Mac and to just get it in front of more people and more eyes and get the brand out there more. It's it's more it's it's more of a marketing effort, you know? It's 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 advertising, right? So when people go to especially on the Vision, right? So like if you think there's only 2000 apps there, so the opportunity people are going to be a little more hungry to look for apps because there's not that many and because it's such a new a new product that it just, you know, there's more opportunity for people to just download Sofa and give it a shot on the Vision Pro. And then that that kind of exposes them to the product, to the brand, which they may eventually check out on the iPhone and on the iPad. And for me, spending a couple of weeks doing this is totally worth it. All right, so first let's talk about the Mac. Now, the Mac is interesting for sofa because you may not think you know it's a downtime organizer and you can keep list of things that you want to watch read play all that kind of stuff and to have it on the mac which is you know a lot of people think of as like a work tool um may seem a little strange but it is it's just very convenient to have it there and i've i have personally found and i know others have found that it's it's better to have something there than to not have it there at all. Now to do this, I used uh, Mac Catalyst, which is you know a, a, a technology and framework that Apple has developed to essentially bring like an iPad version of an app to the Mac and to start using some of the more native uh, Mac APIs and stuff like that. And I did that with um, the Scaled for iPad UI specifically because when I, I tested out scaled for Mac, um, it's, it, it uses a lot of Mac default UI elements and the amount of UI work I would have had to do within a two to three week window was just a little too high. So maybe down the line, I'll, I'll kind of go a little bit deeper with that. But, uh, for now it's just kind of like, it, it actually looks very similar to the iPad version. Um, but it's, you know, using slightly different APIs under the hood. One thing I came across with Catalyst, which I was a little surprised about, was how little access you have to AppKit. And AppKit is the the UI framework for the Mac, and you have UIKit, which is the UI framework for uh, iPhone and iPad, and then SwiftUI is like kind of the new thing that goes across everything. So I had kind of anticipated, oh, I'm going to be using Catalyst, so I will have almost full access to AppKit. I, I kind of thought I would, but you really don't. Like there's a lot of stuff that's really locked down and even stuff with like, you know, NS toolbar and everything. Like uh, even uh, I was trying to do some custom customizations with themes and stuff. And the amount of work I would have had to do to make it feel even more native for the Mac, which is not gonna fit into this kind of two to three week time frame that I had. So, I kind of just kept it to the really the iPad design um, and I'm going to be, you know, refining this over time as things get there. But for now, I think this is I think this is good enough. Right. I, I wouldn't say that this is I wouldn't say that Sofa is a great Mac app, but it is a good Mac app. And like I said before, uh, it's better to have something rather than nothing. All righty. So let's talk about the Vision Pro now. This one was much more challenging from a design perspective. Um, up until this point, I had not even used a Vision Pro. Uh, I had intentionally avoided Vision Pro stuff because when I was working on uh, Sofa 4.0, I didn't want any distractions. And I kind of knew if I, say, I even went to the Apple Store to try one, it would have just kind of been in my head and I, it would have distracted me. And I, I think it would have uh, delayed the launch of 4.0 quite a bit. So I intentionally avoided it and... Uh, you know, so I didn't really know what to expect and how to really design for this environment. Now, one of the things with Vision OS from a UI perspective is this kind of glass texture. Uh, so like the windows and everything is very uh, translucent and you can't see directly through it, but you can see layers and stuff behind it. If you look at Apple's uh, design guidance, they heavily, heavily emphasize the importance of this glass texture and this this glass environment for, for each of these windows. And... I actually didn't know if that was, you know, what, you know, that's Apple's guidance, but like, what's my opinion on that? And I didn't really have one because I never used it. Um, 
but all, also that that actually made it challenging for Sofa because one of Sofa's um, fun selling points and part of the the paid package is you get access to a ton of themes. Uh, there's actually over a hundred themes that you can choose from, and you can set different themes for light mode, for dark mode, all that kind of stuff. And I didn't really know like how was I going to bring that to Vision OS uh, or do I not do that at all? Like, do I just go full in on the the kind of glass environments? So I did some iterations and, and some testing initially. And, you know, I wasn't sure, like I, I initially tested like the full, no, using no glass texture at all, just doing the full uh, UI theming. And it seemed like that was probably a little too far that I needed to have some kind of better balance between that stuff. Luckily, some very helpful people had shared feedback um, that were testing the, the beta version of it. So they were able to share some it's kind of UI suggestions and feedback and stuff like that, which was very helpful. But um, I did eventually go to an Apple store and did demo a Vision Pro, uh, which I won't get into deeply here. But I would say that, you know, I only had 30 minutes with it and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like using my stuff. So it, it is hard to pull a, 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 a hard opinion from this. But I could see that the glass texture is important. Um, and maybe that's just an importance like initially for Vision Pro and then over time it'll become less important. I don't know. Because if you think about it, like in our physical environments, we have tons of stuff that isn't translucent. Actually, most of the stuff isn't. And for UI and objects in your space, I, you know, I still question how important that kind of glass texture is. But... I don't have extensive use with it. So I, I wanted to follow Apple's guidance with this stuff, but then also still still retain some of Sofa's quirky personality and, and the fun feeling of it. Uh, because I, I think when I look at a lot of Vision Pro apps, I actually think a lot of them look the same. And that's not necessarily bad, but it also doesn't, I don't know. There, I'm a designer first and a developer second. So my designer brain is just like, well, I don't want to look like everybody else here, right? So I was trying to find this balance of making it feel uh, like part of the Vision OS ecosystem and feeling native to it, but then also still retaining that personality. And so where I landed is the kind of main shell of the app. Uh, is this glass texture, and then the the main content area is themed, and you can change that theme to whatever you want. And I think for now that's actually a good. It's like a good uh, compromise for for the UI. And I'm sure once people start using it, um, I'll get feedback and figure out like what makes sense. Do I need to expand on things or change things, or maybe this layout is or this this design is kind of uh kind of the right one um but again it's a new platform and there's really not many apps specifically built for it yet so i think there's going to be a lot of uh experimentation and uh and evolution over the years so a couple other small updates for this release so th this release is sofa 4.1 um, but now you can search by your ingredient values or kind of metadata that of stuff that you have so if you have any tags or if you want to search like the author's name of a book that you have saved within the kind of local search, so either globally or within a specific list, you can search that metadata now and find the, the items that you want. And another one is that the text ingredients now adapt to uh, longer text. So, you know, I originally thought like, oh, a text ingredient will be a single line, right? Like people just put short stuff in there. But I was actually getting a lot of feedback of people who were putting much longer things in there. Uh, some were like multiple paragraphs of content and others were maybe just like a couple sentences. Uh, but now the UI adapts and will grow as the amount of text you put in there uh, changes. So now that this work is done, I'm gonna start diving into the new stuff for WWDC and figuring out what makes sense for Sofa and what do I add and what do I kind of ignore. So I'll be sharing more of that stuff as the summer progresses. So if you're interested in trying Sofa out, you can head over to the App Store. You can search Sofa uh, or there's a link in the description. 
And especially if you have a Vision Pro uh, or you or you know you're on the Mac and you want to try Sofa out and give me feedback for you know how it feels on these new platforms, I am definitely open to it. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.